Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Hugh here from Creator Up, and I'm here with. I'm CY, CEO and co-founder of Vispace. So I saw you have a lot of live VR headset there. So tell us about your VR headset. Yeah, so um, let me start from uh, Gear VR. People be, uh, might be uh, very familiar uh, with it already. Uh, Gear VR uh, work with the Samsung uh, phones, S7, S8, S9. We highly recommend S8 and S9 for much better quality. Um, HTC Vive. Uh, with, this is new from uh, January. Uh, this one so far is the uh, highest quality um, mobile VR headset. Uh, it has a 3K resolution, so give you a 360 degree about 8K resolution maximum. And uh, it has a nice IPD adjustment, so can adjust the distance between the two lenses. Uh, that uh, is really useful for some, close to the camera. For, for some people. Yeah. Uh, for oh, some people, wow. it's really important to adjust the distance. Why, why this is so important? We see people like from the IPD from uh, 55 milli uh, millimeter to like a six, uh, 55 to 71. It's a big range between the different persons. Uh, if you don't find a good IPD, you, you feel really, really bad. Your eyes get like converged into a distance. Uh, you, uh, people won't feel comfortable. This one is uh, Oculus Go. It's coming out this month, uh, made by um, Xiaomi and also uh, Facebook. Uh, the quality is slightly lower than the other two. Uh, this one can go to maximum 6K for 360 degree because the screen is about 2.5K. Um, but it's good standalone, also it's good designs. Uh, and um, compare these two especially, I want to mention. Uh, so this one using a free narrow lens, which is a good design, but um, they, it looks like they have some problem when you're looking at the corner of the field view, you see some like distortions. Um, but if you're looking forward, that is absolutely okay. But for this lens, um, I think the distortion on the field, at corner of field view is better. But in terms of quality in general, this one's the best uh, via focus. Um, Gear VR with S7 or S8 or S9. Uh, will be the second, slightly worse than the uh, um, bio focus. Um, Oculus Go is, is not bad, um, but um, think about the price, it's like $200. Yeah, 6K. Yes. You mentioned about also there's a flare when you look at a highlight in the headset. You yeah, about that? Yeah, that, that because the um, bio focus, they use a free nail lens. Uh, free nail lens, if, if looking into the structure, it's a lot of rings. And if it's a highlight on the corner, the highlight, um, the light will be uh, refracted by the other rings. You will see like a flare effect, uh, which is not very um, happy, but um, just be be um, be uh, like current to to early stage. Okay, good. No, and and the Oculus go don't have that problem. Uh, I would say much uh, less. Much less. Yes. So let's talk about the frame rate. So I know that uh, you actually recommend people to output 30 frames per second, even they shot in 60 frames per second. Can you go into detail of that? Yeah, so this is a little complicated because that has a lot to do um, how um, the VR rendering is done. Yeah. Uh, so so the one basic rule uh, in, in sampling uh, series, or if uh, people know about sig signal processing, um, there's a there's a um, series. Say if you have a signal about uh, some frequency and you want to sample or render them, you should render it as a two x frequency, so that you will not creating like aliasing or you will not lose information. And for uh, for Gear VR example, if you use uh, S8 S9, the phone has a refresh rate of uh, 60, so means the maximum refresh sampling rate is 60. So if your sampling rate is 60, then the optimal video frame rate should be 30. So if you go more than 30, um, the benefits will be really minimal. So that, that's why like, we are always like, recommend, for example, use, uh, the half of the resolution of the hardware. For Oculus Go, it's 65 hertz FPS for the hardware. The focus, right? Focus. 65. Focus. Yeah. yeah, 65. Mm -hmm. Means for focus, the optimal uh, frame rate should be like 30. 7 or 38, something like that. Okay. Uh, you can go a little above the 40, uh, not big deal, but if you go too high, there's no um, obvious benefits. And for um, the Oculus Go? Oculus Go, um, 72. 72 yeah. uh, means uh, um, 36 is, uh, is uh, optimal. 
Uh, some people do um, 24 is okay, uh, but 36 is, uh, is optimal. So, but don't do 30 for that. You actually recommend 24 frames per second, right? Yeah, but that's kind of hard decision, right? Because you don't know which, uh, which headset you're going to use. Mm -hmm. um, so, but that's why that's another recommendation, like when you do shooting, uh, shoot a high uh, frame rate as possible. Okay. If you shoot at 60, you can always export to 30 or 36 or 37 as you want. Okay. So you have more, like, you, you don't have to shoot again. Okay. <laughs> And uh, even you shoot at 60 um, before you deliver to your audience, you can down, um, downside to uh, 30 FPS. And that will not lose any information. It's actually um, recommend to do that. Yeah, not 50. much. Like I, I, I'll bet most uh, regular consumers they may not be able to see it, as long as like you, 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 you do the do it properly. This concludes the part one of this series. In part two, we are going to go deeper and talk about integration tests of your post-production pipeline. Because with each effect you add in post, like color correction, denoise, stabilization, etc., you are running a risk of dropping information, like losing stops in dynamic range or losing the sharpness of your videos. We will introduce benchmarking tools to test every step of your post-processing pipeline to determine if you are over-processing and losing video qualities. Then in part 3, we are going even deeper to explain why we need an 8K video for a 3K screen and the ideas of multi-sampling and super-sampling. As a VR headset is different from a traditional TV, the pixel matching is not one-to-one. -one. As I travel all the way to San Francisco, convince Visbit to share their research with me and eventually to you if you are watching this video so you as a consumer or creator will be armed with the knowledge to make a judgment call and again I'm doing this from my love and my obsession with VR technology and I want to educate my viewers you so you can have the confidence to create amazing detective VR contents if you want to thank me don't forget to subscribe and give me a like. Hit that notification bell and share this video. And I will see you in part two of this series.